In the documentation here, you can see you have uh, performance measurements using the GCC compiler in this case uh, for the problem setup that we have selected with minus or fast or equivalent flags uh, enabled. So you can see that applying outlining and gather scatter has an increment in the runtime because you are copying data to temporary alloc and memory. So you are consuming more memory and you are consuming more CPU cycles to make the copies of the gather and the copy back of the scatter. So this is something that is uh, expected. So whenever you make progress and you continue doing the rest of the um, changes, you can see that uh, they don't improve performance. Sometimes loop fission, this kind of, fabric of, of transformations, can unexpectedly lead to enable optimizations on the, in the compiler that were not possible before, because you have applied array of structs, you have applied inlining, so more information and good information is available for the compiler. So you can see that after fission, we reduce almost two seconds in the serial compilation with the running on the same machine with the same flags. So doing the code transformations properly in the correct order, including inlining as the question uh, asked by Kiran, can lead to these results. Doing it kind of randomly without a good uh, criteria can lead to the opposite uh, uh, results, can increase compilation times and can even decrease the performance of the quality of the code generated by the compiler. So here you have also uh, preliminary measurements and speed ups. You can see that with respect to the original sequential version, we are, in, despite the overhead of uh, gather scatter, we are still reducing the time and accelerating the application in the, on the CPU 1.2x, on the GPU, 1.3x and on the GPU with OpenACC 1.5x. But this is, as you see, as, as Helen mentioned several times the other day, this is pretty dependent on the compiler. So in this case, you need to follow best practice recommendations by NERSC staff in terms of what is at this at each moment the best compiler option, the best compilation flags for you to go to a different setup, GPU OpenMP, GPU OpenMP or GPU OpenACC. Okay, so you have this experimentation here, as well as the sequence of commands and the given flags that you have in the scripts that uh, Javier mentioned. So I would like to fi finalize this presentation, putting all of this into in the context of motifs and patterns. So if you remember, we talk about patterns, parallel web patterns, and we talk about essentially compute patterns, the sparse reduction, but we have more the for all, the scalar reduction, the sparse for all. We also have memory patterns, which we have not addressed in this course. And you also have flow patterns, that is repeat, repeated execution of computation patterns, okay? So with these two patterns, we have focused on the sparse reduction. I will not go through it. It's just copied here, this slide, for, to facilitate you uh, learning this and assimilating these concepts. The flow patterns, the typical convergence loop or propagation loops of time step simulation in scientific codes, they fit into this, these flow patterns. And as we said, for each pattern on each platform, you have available different parallelization strategies. So we have been playing with the most basic one, the atomic, because it is the more simple to implement and is the one that is available both on CPU and GPU. So, this is the reason why we selected Atomic for comparison reasons. Also, if you remember, we started last week with a set of benchmarks, a table characterized in terms of motives and in terms of compute and flow patterns. In particular, we, you have been playing with ATMAX, a sparse reduction, LULHMK, if you had time to make the worksheet of LULHMK of last year training courses, and CPIC, the new code of today of particle in cells. So you can see that for the same patterns, flow pattern combined with a sparse reduction, we get very different performance results 
on the CPU with multi-threaded code on Cori. ATMAX slows down. Lulesh speeds up a bit, and Lulesh speeds up significantly, 3.7, with the same sparse reduction. And on the GPU, the differences are bigger. ATMOX, you still struggle, and you still slow down with Atomic. With CPIC, you have a bit better performance, 1.5. And with Lulesh, suddenly you, you jump from 4x to 25x. So the question is, what, what is the difference? If the, pat, the parallel word pattern is the same, the properties in the code are the same, what are the properties of the problem or the motive that can justify these differences in performance, if there is any reason to justify that? So this is what we are trying to understand here. So here you can see that the three codes, particularly the corresponding sparse reductions, are being evaluated according to three criteria. Number of repetitions. Remember that typically in simulation loops, if we repeat and we do millions of matrix matrix multiplications, millions of invocations of a given uh, uh, motive. So we need to take that parameter into account, number of repetitions. But also the sparse reduction itself has a number of iterations. So the iterations of the sparse reduction can go from zero to three or from zero to 30,000. So the amount of computation in terms of number of loop iterations of the sparse reduction can have a significant impact in the difference. And finally, the computation itself, every iteration of the sparse reduction can be just three floating point operations or can involve millions or of floating point operations. So this is where we have found different properties in the sparse reductions of the three use cases. ATMAX has only 10 repetitions. The number of iterations of the sparse reduction depends on the metric size. The selected problem is 17,000. And the execution time per iteration of, of the sparse reduction is low because you are just uh, processing the non-zeros of a given row and a given column. Okay, so the matrix size also determines the amount of execution time per loop iteration of the sparse reduction. So this is what we tag here as low. Look at Lulesh. Lulesh, you have more than 200 million repetitions by the nature of the nuclear physics that it's simulating. The number of iterations of the sparse reduction loop is more than 330,000. And each iteration of the sparse reduction has thousands of floating point operations. So very high computational load. And CPIC is something in the middle. You have 65 millions of repetitions, but only three iterations in the sparse reduction. Not even 100, not even 1000, only three, by the nature of the problem that is solved in the CPIC code. And the execution time is tiny because in the end, what you are computing in the sparse reduction are the interactions between the particles in the cell. So if the number of particles confined in the cell is uh, low, sorry, I want to start my video. Uh, if the, the number of particles confined in the cell is low, you have very few floating point operations to perform here. So tiny, Execution, tiny execution time per loop iteration of the sparse reduction. So we can see that the type of problem, the type of simulation technique that we are using somehow is reflected in different properties that determine the amount of computation or repetitions of the sparse reduction, okay? And the amount of memory required to do the computations in serial and in parallel. So finally with this, we wanted to go to show you this, let's call it the performance quadrant of a sparse reduction. It's the first time we, we show this type of analysis. It's something that we really wanted to have at the end of this course. So here we are in the quadrants comparing, putting in the y-axis the number of repetitions, low to high. So this convergence of propagation flow pattern versus the execution, the cost the computational cost of the sparse reduction. That is in general, the product of the number of iterations by the number of floating point 
operations per iteration. So we, for simplicity, we classified it in low, high, number of repetitions, low, high computational cost. And here we can see that CP, KT, Max, and Lulish are in different positions of the quadrant. So CP has very high number of repetitions with very low computational cost, so difficult to parallelize. This is the red color, the difficulty to obtain performance. In particular, we, we are, for, for comparison reasons, we are playing only with the atomic parallelization strategy, okay? So red color, difficult, so we need to fine tune the, 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 the parallelization to optimize it so that we can parallelize the sparse reduction jointly with the for all and in the context of the simulation loop, okay? To, to rise this 1.5 uh, speed data we get here. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have Lulesh. Very high number of repetitions, but also very high computational cost of one single execution of the, of the sparse reduction. This makes the difficulty to obtain performance lower, green color. In particular, look at the GPU numbers. The same strategy almost applied here. The same reasoning led to 25x speed up. No additional complex optimizations needed to get this performance. Okay. So motif is, rep Lulesh is representative of the motif structure grids with finite elements. CP is representative of the motif and structure grids, particle in cell, particle methods. And in the middle, we have the AT max example that depending on the size of the matrix of the sparse linear algebra motif, it can go uh, to the right or to the left in the cost of the execution cost or computational cost of the sparse reduction. But still only 10 iterations in the experiment that we did. Okay. And in this case, it is hard to parallelize because the amount of computations, the floating point operations of the sparse reduction grows with the matrix size. So grows in terms of memory requirements. So whenever you increase the load, you increase the memory requirements. So it is difficult to parallelize it uh, efficiently without exhausting the memory or requiring uh, big uh, memories in the, in the computation nodes. Okay, so uh, Helen, this is what we wanted to cover today at the, in the first hour. More or less, we are in the time of the first hour with the, all the path for CPIC, the very basic usage of the tools with the CPIC on Cori, and this final uh, reflection about the reason in terms of performance, the properties of the motives, and the relationship between the, with the parallel world patterns. I hope people find this interesting. Yes, thank you so much for your presentation. Let's ask if people have any questions.